thank you, Aaron. That was uplifting and beautiful. You don't know how much I want to talk about politics tonight. But I won't. I'm just going to give an eight-point quiz on the election. That's all I'm doing uh, for that. Um, I want to ask if just the members of the NHS or the prospective members of the NHS, if you know the answer to these, will you please stand when I say the question and I'll, I'll point to you. Don't expect me to get the name that quickly. Remember, I was born in 1947. Uh, so I point to you, answer, okay? Okay, Number, these are pretty easy questions. There's nine of them. How many candidates are currently running for president? Or currently running? How many? Anybody? Can anybody stand up and name them? Students. Yes. Courtney. Trump, Carson, Cruz, and Neil. Almost. Anyone, anybody want to say what? Carson's out. Carson's out. Well, he hasn't officially said in Galileo. Which party, all right, this one's a little harder. Which party is Bernie, what party is Bernie Sanders? Anybody? Is it president? He's an independent. He's an independent. <laughs> Number four. Number four. What was the first and only third party to win the presidency? That's a hard. What's the only? What's the only party to have? The only third party to have won the presidency. I'll give you a hint. The candidate was Abraham Lincoln. Republican Party. Republican Party. Was a third party back then. Number five. Which state has the earliest caucuses? Anybody? Iowa. Which state has the earliest primaries? Huh? New Hampshire. Two days, two days ago, 12 states had primaries and caucuses. What do we call that day? Super Tuesday. Recently, a highly respected federal official named Antonin Scalia passed away. What office did he hold? Very good. What Republican candidate is giving Mr. Trump the hardest time? Mr. Cruz. Mr. Cruz. Good job. Good job. You passed as a whole. Now let's get to something. Now let's get to something more important than politics. Principal thrower, teachers and staff, parents, students, friends. It really is an honor to have been asked to speak here tonight and I really appreciate the invitation. I left teaching at TA nine months ago. Nine months later. Do I miss making lesson plans? No. Do I miss lunch duty? Yes. No. Do I miss Edmodo? No. No way. Do I miss you? Yes! I really do. <laughs> That's what I miss the most. And for just a few minutes, I would like to give you some advice. I know how seniors and juniors and sophomores love advice. Uh, but I'm... Uh, eight points I'm going to make. But I'm also going to congratulate you for what you do because you follow this advice. So I'm just encouraging you to continue and congratulating you for the things that you do do already. Uh, you have been an honor to National Honor Society attributes, I'm sure, which are of course scholarship, leadership, character, and community service. All right, uh, here's my, here are my eight messages to you, they're not long. Number one, respect your parents and listen to their advice. Perhaps even more now than when you were a little kid. They are wiser than you, they are smarter than you, and they have been where you have been. Pay attention to them. Congratulations, because I know you are doing that already. All right, see how fast this is going? We're already on number two. Number two, keep your minds open to new ideas. You may know what capitalism is, but what, do you know what democratic socialism is? You may know what a subpoena is, but do you know what pro bono means? 
You may know the tenets of Christianity, but do you know what Islam teaches? Keep your mind open. Congratulations. You probably wouldn't be here tonight, students, if you didn't do that already. Number three, remember to keep your mind open also to old ideas. You know, things that you learned in Sabbath school when you were a child, in Bible class in school, politeness and manners, things that you were taught very early in life. Choosing friends and associates who build them up. Congratulations, because I know you all do that. I know this about you. Number four, learn to relax. After 40 years of teaching and not relaxing, according to my wife, I have learned how to relax some over the last nine months. Uh, I, have, I have my morning worship. I can actually sit back and think about it and reflect on it uh, during the week now. I didn't used to be able to do that very much. I can spend an entire afternoon babysitting for my granddaughter Savannah and not rush a thing. Just sit there, relax, and do what she wants to do and play with her. By the way, her birthday is tomorrow. She'll be fine. <laughs> Her name is Savannah. If you're going to do any shopping, her name is Savannah. <laughs> I know that relaxing may be hard for you super achievers with very busy lives, but try to make some, take some time. Don't take everything so seriously. Smell the roses. If you're doing this already, congratulations. If you're not, get busy and start smelling the roses. Number five, the first, pray first, worry later. Pray first, worry later. Enough said. Spend some time worrying. Spend less time worrying and more time working. I'm speaking to myself on this. In fact, all of these I speak to myself. If you have a big project coming up, a big paper coming up, don't spend a whole lot of time wondering whether you can do it. Pray and get busy doing it. Congratulations. I know you are doing that because I've had many of you in class. Number six. Get out and experience nature. See nature. You don't have to study trees to study nature. Just take some time looking at trees. I love nature. I think it's God's greatest connection with us, one of the greatest connections with us. Uh, and I spend as much time as I can in nature observing it. Sometimes it's only looking out the window when I'm driving. Uh, if you are doing that, congratulations. God bless you. Number seven, only two more. Choose a favorite Bible text. Keep, keep it in you and on you. My favorite text is Isaiah 40, 31. Remember I said keep it in you and on you. Here it is. You can finish it probably. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up like wing, uh, with wings like eagles. They shall and not be weary. They shall and not faint. I love that verse, and I can tell you all you too. Congratulations. Uh, if you have a favorite text, if not, choose one. Keep it with you and on you. It really helps me out. Number eight, the last piece of advice. Realize that God is thinking about you right now. Right now, this very instant, what an awesome thought. He's thinking about you right now. Uh, congratulations for knowing this and for acting upon it. Uh, good job. Good job. One of my biggest goals in life is to learn, continue to, continuing to learn something. I'm not in school anymore, I'm not teaching anymore, but I still want to continue to learn as much as I can. I would encourage you to stop, to keep learning, even when you are not in a class or studying for a test. <coughs> and it's about keeping your mind open to these new ideas and reviewing old ideas that you already knew. Last week I learned some things in my reading, and I remember two things that I wanted to mention tonight that I learned that I did not know until next, last week. Uh, I was reviewing some old ideas. Uh, I had for 28 years been teaching that the first specific thing mentioned in the Bible, specific in the Bible about government, was listed in the New Testament when Paul was speaking about authority and respecting authority, people of authority, and paying your taxes in Romans 13 and several other texts. But actually the first reference to government 
It's not in the New Testament. According to many Bible scholars, I didn't know this, uh, it's Genesis 9-6, when Noah and his family left the ark and God gave them rules to live by. God said this. You're going to love this. I'm sure you've read it before. Whoever kills a human being will be killed by a human being. Can you see government there? Uh, this verse implies three things. Capture of the murderer. Oh. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Capture of the murderer. Trial of the murderer. And punishment of the murderer. It's all there. So that was new to me. And that is probably the first mention of government way back in Genesis 9. I learned that, and I'm glad. I like new information. It's probably not terribly exciting for people who don't teach government. But for someone who's taught government for 28 years and didn't know that, a little bit of shame. 